Hi, my name is Amir from ProBasic and today we're going to talk about writing binary files in C++. Uh, from my previous videos, uh, the one change you guys are going to notice is that uh, I'm going to write the program as I'm talking to you because people have pointed out uh, that they have trouble following a pre-written program which I usually have done in the past. So we'll start off by basically bringing up uh, the uh, Microsoft uh, Visual C++ uh, IDE and we're gonna just um, uh, let me just go back here say so files a new project and then we're just gonna say a console application and we're gonna say copy file as a and we're gonna untick this box for now although for this particular um, presentation it's not necessary but in future presentations I might be using header files which are not pre-compiled and it just this gives you an error and then you have to go into the options and change it so I've as a matter of habit what I've done is that uh, I just uncheck that box and there you go and what we're gonna do is we're gonna just leave everything as they are so first thing we need to do create binary files is to get f stream uh, uh, reference to a stream class and what this does is allows us to create read and write files and treat them as either text or binary files now just to let you know that there is very little difference between a text file and a binary file in windows um, there is a fundamental way the operating system treats them but if you were to move on to Unix uh, you'd find this this is very little difference in way the the operating system treats those files so anyway so before we start using the stream um, uh, class what we need to do is include the namespace so those of you, of you who are familiar with the standard uh, before you uh, excuse me before you um, use uh, a class uh, from a standard template library you have to basically include so we go say using namespace std pardon my typing and we start essentially what we do is we create an instance of stream I'm gonna call it reader and uh, I'm gonna in the constructor of the suite I'm gonna say copy pdf uh, and uh, one more thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say std ios in and one more I'll be std iOS binary there you go binary now we're gonna put a condition say if not reader which means is that for some reason it's not able to create that particular file then return if I can type return better so if you can't do it don't worry about it and we're gonna just create a global variable here we're gonna say define block equal to 64 and I'm gonna sort of get to it what that means in We're going to create an array. And
Uh, uh, so once we basically tested that the reader is able to read, we go down to another creating another F S T R E A M writer writer again when I say so let me do to be copied sort of and this is going to be see p i d dot p d f and again we copy all of that and gonna put it in there and now this time since we are sending a file out we basically say out Again, we basically say if not writer, then and return. If you're not able to create a writer, or if not able to create the file to be written, don't bother going any further. Uh, by the way, this is expecting a value, so you can basically say one or two, it, um, and then we are done. Now we start with the loop. We basically say while reader while not reader R -E -A -D -E -R dot e o f which stands for end of bits which means till you have not read this file to the very end keep doing this so what we're gonna say is reader dot read and we're gonna by the way, when you are trying to read a file, it's written um, uh, in in a series of bytes, which is character values. And what you have to do is that uh, whatever you pass as your reading block, which in my case is the unsigned char my my array, you have to actually cast it into uh, let me a char pointer. Uh, now you have basically since array is in itself the is a pointer. So you basically go this and it's saying what is the size? So you say B L O C K S. Uh, that should do it. Let me just run compile. Make sure everything compiles. Yeah, all good. And you basically say writer R T R dot write. And again. I'm just gonna just copy and paste all of this in because that's what it's expecting. Uh, not that. So basically, let me it goes through a loop and the loop runs till the end of the file is reached. So every time it's gonna read, it's gonna read 64 characters of one byte each, and. Uh, then the writer would write them to another file and that's how you write binary files because binary files are nothing but uh, just a collection of byte array basically just like you know one byte after another byte and after another byte now to create a file from scratch uh, in a way that like you know this is what i'm saying is that you know the file to be copied but what if you have to create a file from scratch for that to happen you basically have to define your own data structure your own file types and that is a very big discussion uh, i mean to say for example people who created flash file or a wave file or mp3 files internal structures of these files at a very elementary level is still the same there's still a collection of bytes but how those bytes are written what each byte means if four bytes come together to form an integer if two bytes come together to form a short or a float that basically uh, is something which is uh, up to the people who create the binary format so let's just move on and after we have done we're saying uh, reader the uh, reader dot close we want to close the reader and basically free up the file and writer is just not close it's flush first uh, and then close uh, flush essentially means that you know it, it, anything which is sort of left in the writing buffer write it to the file and be done with it and then close it that's what it means essentially Okay. 
and just for to make sure that this block was executed properly, I'm just going to bring in IO stream. You know, saying that uh, we have managed to write the file properly, so something like. Um, uh, see out file IDD in ASU something to that effect and do uh, mark the end of our stream end. So because the thing is that if um, if it were not encounter an error trying to read the file, it's not going to go any further and return. So if this last statement gets executed, we know for sure that uh, uh, we have managed to successfully copy our file across. By the way, same can be done from a Win32 API called copy files. This is what I'm showing you. This is how internally it is done. Uh, so let's uh, move on to where this uh, project is located and we're gonna just bring a file along for uh, copy and uh, just paste it here. I want to rename that file to Now we're going to run our program now and make sure this file gets copied. And it did. Uh, by the way, uh, it was way too quick for you guys to see anything. So what I'm going to do is run this program from console to, so you guys make sure you get to see everything. Let's Uh, the copy file exe. Okay, so I'm gonna just delete this. So uh, not this one. I deleted the wrong file. Uh, okay, just give me a moment. We're gonna restore this file. Store this. Okay. And I'm going to delete this one actually. And uh, so let's try this again with the copy file. and you get the message file written successfully which we go back to our directory we find that this file has been copied across successfully if you want to know what it is it's basically a uh, very advanced uh, GPU programming uh, guide in PDF if you're wondering what that file was I hope you find this uh, presentation to be interesting and uh, hope to see you again in the future